Well, at the La Jolla Institute, we do fundamental research on the immune system. By studying and understanding the immune system, we're able to change the way that we create new medicines, how we administer healthcare, and what we think about when we think about wellness. We're one of the few organizations in the world that studies the immune system, that has that as, as its focus. Most people know the immune system is very important for protecting you from infection. Most people know vaccination is a very important public health measure. We study vaccination. What's less known in the general public is that the immune system actually also causes many, many diseases. So the very system that keeps us healthy every day often inappropriately over-responds and causes many autoimmune and inflammatory diseases. And examples of these range from uh, very serious diseases like multiple sclerosis, type 1 diabetes, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, all the way to allergies, which can be life-threatening and serious. Vaccine development, uh, depressingly, is still primarily an empirical trial and error field. Um, their vaccine either works or it fails, and then that's basically it, and you just go and you start over. And, and that's a lousy way to try and make progress. What we really want is to turn it into an engineering type problem. And so what my lab does is we study vaccine-related immunology to try and understand the, the fundamental aspects of the immune system so that we know what makes a good immune response that results in a good response to a vaccine. Dengue virus? It impacts 3.6 billion people in the world in over now 120 different countries. Our lab has been the pioneering lab in developing animal models with relevant aspects of human disease, human dengue disease. And now that we have a mouse model, we can test antiviral candidates and vaccine candidates. We see in the human pancreas there is immune cells and these immune cells probably attack the beta cells in type 1 diabetes. So the holy grail, as I call it, is to have a delivery of a protein, ideally from beta cells, for example, an inactive insulin, and use this to di redirect the immune system. If you imagine, it would be fantastic if you could vaccinate the young children or young adults and really delay or well, altogether prevent the disease without many side effects. And that's um, something we have worked intensively on since already the early 90s. Hopefully now we'll uh, slowly make its way uh, meaningfully into the clinic. We study um, the innate immune response, which is your body's early and fundamental immune response to viruses, bacteria, and even now we know that the innate immune response is important in chronic inflammatory diseases like cancer, heart disease, diabetes, and we want to study key regulators of the body's innate immune response using functional genomics approaches to make associations between genes and disease. Cancer immunotherapy is taking the effector arm of the immune system and directing it against the antigens that define a cancer cell. Well, I think the, the treatments based on chemotherapy, irradiation, and surgery have really gone as far as they're going to go, and they've been optimized and perfected with respect to treating cancer. And they're not sufficient because the cancer, um, in most cases, comes back and has developed and evolved to be resistant to the chemotherapy. In immunotherapy, the, uh, the cells of the immune system themselves are a drug and they uh, are able to adapt to the changes in the um, tumor cell as it evolves and actually target specifically the cancer cells rather than a lot of collateral damage that you get with these other uh, more standard treatments. We have 24 laboratories, nearly 400 employees, but we have a size where there's very little bureaucracy. People know each other and I think people know how to get something fixed, how to get something done, and who knows about X, whatever it might be. And I think you, st you still have that kind of esprit de corps, if you will, that kind of feeling of unity with a group that size. I think uh, that certainly La Jolla Institute for Allergy and Immunology ranks favorably with the Scripps Research Institute. It ranks up with institutes like MIT, Harvard, 
Uh, it's really at the very top echelon of immunological expertise. Well, the intimacy of the setting certainly can't be beat. If you have only 20 people, you definitely know them all. You get to know all the faculty. Uh, you tend to be on very good terms with them because there just isn't room for disputes. And if they're carefully chosen by a strong leader like Mitch Cronenberg always has been, then they work together and uh, they really become more than the sum of their parts. So there's a lot to be said for that. Clearly, people want to fund things that they think will uh, bring some advantage to them or to the public at large. And so with a research institute focused on immunology, which is perhaps one of the more practical uh, sciences that exist, the opportunity for translational work that is moving things from the bench to the bedside is much greater than it might be, say, in other areas. Fundamental scientists hope that there are visionary philanthropists out there. In the same way that philanthropists hope that there are visionary scientists at the Institute, have grown to meet both. They exist, and if we can put them together, the future is going to be very different. Philanthropists today can leverage the research we're doing here, the technology available in the world, to utterly change medicine and how we actually live our lives.